Today I'm going to be reacting to a video called 101 Facts About Canada and of course I've watched quite a few videos about Canada so far everything from history to geography in many different areas and I feel like I've learned a lot more things about Canada than I previously known and for that I'm very appreciative I love learning about Canada there's just so much to the country and with this video I'm hoping to learn more I think maybe I've learned some of these facts from previous videos, but I'm hoping there's some things on this video that I never knew. You can tell me if there's anything on this video, if you're from Canada, that you never knew about Canada. And tell me what your favourite fact about Canada is also. Let's check this one out. Why, hello and greetings, mother factors. I'm Sam, and today I'm here to talk to you about Canada. <laughs> about. See what I did there? Probably kind of racist. Sorry. That's right, the land of maple syrup, handsome prime ministers, and the land of the beaver. No sniggering at the back, you. But how, oh how, did Canada's coins become known as loonies and toonies? How did a cliff loonies formation in Alberta get its name from a horrific and gruesome death? And how many times did I break down and cry while listening to Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On to prepare for this video? Yeah, Here's that a was a huge More song. than I should have done. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So strap on your seatbelt, apologise to the seatbelt for strapping it in too hard, and grab a big <laughs> gulp of Tim Hortons coffee. Because this is 101 facts about Canada. Oh, the Canada. stereotypes so far. Number one. The name Canada comes from the St. Lawrence Iroquoian word Kanata, Kanata which means yeah. village or settlement. This turned out to be somewhat of an understatement because... Dot, 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 pause for emphasis. Number two. Yeah, that one I learned about in the Heritage Minutes video. Uh, the, the word Kanata yeah, means like village or settlement. Uh, and that comes from the First Nations people. Tell me what other important words come from the First Nations people. I think on a previous video, someone told me that there's a few other cities and towns in Canada that come from that but tell me what other words still live today from the first nations people one of the first things you should realize about canada is that it's huge it's the second largest country by total area and the fourth largest by land area covering 9.98 million square kilometers so huge number three if you are somehow struggling to grasp the sheer enormity of canada you should know that canada spans across not one not two not even three four or five but six Time zones. Six time zones. Number four. That one I actually never even knew. I've not seen that mentioned on any other video. Of course, the size of the landmass is what shocked me in the first place. And when you like see how not just how it goes from so big east to west, but how far north it goes right up to the Arctic, and you see all those like thousands of islands, small pieces of broken off island all over the place. Uh, but the time zone thing is quite just really emphasizes that size. Canada also has the world's largest coastline at 202,080 kilometers. That's almost four times longer than the coastline of the second placed country, Indonesia, which has a coastline measuring a measly 54,716 kilometers. <laughs> Get it together, Indonesia. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Size doesn't matter. I've been up, I've heard. Number five. Canada is home to the world's northernmost permanently inhabited place, the aggressively named Alert, mm. found in the territory of Nunavut. The temperature in Alert only rises above freezing in the summer, summer, summer time, descending in the winter to a truly horrifying average temperature of around minus 40 degrees. As such, the population of Alert is quite understandably a tiny, probably constantly shivering, 62 people. Number six. Yeah, tell me more about that. I, I learned the name Alert in the Canadian quiz that I did. And Nunavut seems like a very interesting place. I know that's a territory rather than a province. Maybe this week is when I'll, I'll when I'm doing my province videos, I'll do like a, a reaction to Nunavut. Tell me what your knowledge of Nunavut is. I know that it's probably the largest by landmass region of Canada. Maybe Quebec, but uh, maybe Quebec's the most populated, but Nunavut by size I think is the biggest, but I think it may also be the least populated as well. So a very interesting place. Tell me what you know about that or what's interesting about Nunavut as well. Six. Canada has the longest binational land border, which it shares with the United States, who I understand love a good border. It measures in at 8,891 kilometers long, much of which is made up of the border between Canada and the American state of Alaska. Number seven. Despite Canada being absolutely chuffing massive, the vast majority of Canadians live within a couple hundred kilometres of this border. Probably due to the fact that anywhere further north than this is genital shrinkingly cold. 
<laughs> Number eight. Yeah, that's what I feel. The yeah. capital city of Canada is Ottawa, home to a population of around 934,000 people. Despite being the capital, Ottawa is not the largest Canadian city and is, in fact, the fifth. Come on, Ottawa, get it together. Number nine. I guess, again, it's kind of similar to the USA where Washington is not the most populated, but it's the capital city. And from what I've learned about Ottawa, that seems like an awesome place. The place where you get like a mixture of cultures. Seems like, like a, a bit of a quaint town compared to maybe, or a quaint city compared to like your Toronto's, Vancouver and that sort of thing as well. Maybe smaller, uh, but still a very interesting place nonetheless. Tell me what your thoughts on Ottawa are as a capital. The name Ottawa comes from the Anishinaabe word meaning trade or exchange and is rather disappointingly nothing to do with otters. Oh man, I love otters. What am I going to do with this picture of otters now? Oh, let's look at this for a sec. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Number 10. The largest city in Canada is actually Toronto, home of 2,731,571 people. Toronto is also the birthplace of rapper Drake. Are these facts related? <laughs> you decide. Number 11. Toronto actually used to be called York. God, first New York, now this. What is it with North Americans always stealing our place names? <laughs> Number 12. Yeah, I never, I never had a clue about that. Tell me if you knew about that, if you're from Canada. Toronto used to be called York. Tell me if that's the same for any other cities or towns in Canada. Did they used to have any previous names? I think New York, you mentioned New York, obviously in the USA. I think that used to be called New Amsterdam, if I believe, if that's correct. You can correct me if I'm wrong. 12. Canada is officially bilingual, with both English and French having equal status at the federal level across Canada, as well as all over people's tongues. English is the mother tongue of approximately 60% of the people, whereas le français is the mother tongue of around 20% of the population. I've said tongue so many times now. Tongue. Ugh. Ugh. Number 13. Before the arrival of European colonizers in the early 16th century, Canada had been inhabited by indigenous people for thousands of years. These people are generally split into three groups, First Nations, Inuit, and Matisse. And Ooh. together, they spoke over 60 different languages from 10 separate language families. And this was way, way, way before Google Translate, remember? So life must have been incredibly difficult. You'd be mm. asking someone for soup and accidentally asking to rot with their arms or something. Number 14. Yeah, tell me more about the First Nations people. That In recommending videos, that's the other area that I'm keen to explore. I just have to find some good, uh, good videos to watch and things that I will learn a lot about it. To learn that those, those three main ones is also quite interesting. Tell me if you know of any differences between those three groups of uh, indigenous people. Tell me what you think about each of them. How do they live together with other Canadians? Is it is there like a contrast in the way they they are compared to normal Canadians? Tell me in the comments. The First Nations are Canadians from indigenous groups south of the Arctic Circle. In fact, there are 634 recognized First Nations communities across Canada. Oh. Number 15. <laughs> Heading north, we find the Inuit people who are spread across several countries in the Arctic Circle. As agriculture was never really an option in the freezing climates of the Inuit's home, unless they were farming for ice, Inuit culture is very heavily centered around a proud hunting tradition. Mm. Hardcore. Number 16. The Matisse are Canadians of mixed indigenous and European heritage. Actually, the word okay. Matisse simply means mixed. Whoa, These mixed cool. communities tended to marry among themselves, and they probably held a hell of a mash too, eventually developing a distinct cultural identity of their own. Mm. Good for them. Number 17. The Nunavut territory in northern Canada was only created in 1999, back when Prince was partying. And prior to that, it was included entirely in the Northwestern Territories. This was done to give the native Inuit population more autonomy over their affairs. Number 18. And just so you know, the most recently created Canadian province or territory, which is Nunavut, remember? Accounts for over a fifth of the nation's entire land area, mm. making it about 210 times the size of Canada's smallest province or territory, Prince Edward's Island. If Nunavut mm. was its own country, it would be the 15th largest country on the planet. Once Whoa. again, Canada is very, very big. They just don't flaunt it very often, probably out of politeness or something. Number nine. It would be the fifth biggest country in the world if Nunavut was the, its own country. That is an absolutely insane fact. That's the most mind-blowing one so far for sure. But yeah, really 
appreciate getting to learn a little bit more about each of those groups so far. Maybe we'll have more after this fact as well. Uh, but yeah, it's like, this is what is making me really fall in love with Canada. Of course, there's other countries with indigenous people like the Canadian neighbour USA has like the Native Americans. In Australia, they have the First Nations, Aboriginal people. But Canada is so interesting because they have this vast part of this country uh, but has such a unique culture within those those groups have a huge landmass but very sparsely populated while still holding like these amazing traditions and cultures i really cannot wait to learn more about 19. Them. the first prime minister of canada was john a Macdonald who served as the nation's leader twice. First between 1867 and 1873, and then again between 1878 and 1891. He is remembered fondly for having a farm. Uh, oh no, sorry, that's the other MacDonald. He is remembered fondly for helping form modern day Canada, and remembered less fondly for his party taking bribes from railway companies and his insistence that French speaking resistance leader Louis Riel be executed. Don't mess with MacDonald's farm. Okay. Number 20. Serious person. The current Prime Minister of Canada is Justin Trudeau. Oh, what a dreamboat. Who is the eldest son of former Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, making him the first Canadian Prime Minister to be related to a former holder of the post. Mm, In case you're thinking okay. that's false, I never it's knew that, actually. actually Trudeau. <laughs> okay, <Trudeau>. sorry. <laughs> Number 20. Yeah, tell me more about Justin Trudeau. Uh, I don't really know much about him. I see some stories about him here and there on youtube and other social media platforms and uh i get like this uh, this feeling that he is very either a lot of people really 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 like him or a lot of people really don't like him but tell me what your views on him uh how has he served the country has he been successful in his position how was his father yeah learning about that as well it's like is that nepotism how did is it just like is it just a family of career politicians type thing uh, tell me more about the differences be between him, uh, Justin, and his father as well as leaders. Justin Trudeau is also the first president who was actually born in the capital of Ottawa. The more you know. Mm. Number 22. Uh, as far as we know, Justin Trudeau is the only Canadian Prime Minister to have a tattoo, which depicts the Earth surrounded by a Hydra Raven. The more I find out about him, the dreamier he gets. <laughs> Number 23. Canada only became completely independent in 1982, with the passing of the Constitution Act. Prior to that, the British Parliament retained the power to amend Canada's constitution and the request of the Parliament of Canada. Yeah, sorry, we did that a lot back then. Number 24. Despite being a sovereign nation, Canada's head of state is Queen Elizabeth II, who, as you may or may not know, lives primarily in England. Love you, your match. Her position as Yas Queen is represented in Canada by a Governor General, a position currently held by David Johnston. Number 25. As mentioned previously, Canada is officially bilingual at the federal level, and the heart of French speaking Canada is found in the province of Quebec. The people of Quebec have a strong identity of their own, so much so that there has been two separate votes on making Quebec an independent country. The second of these was agonizingly close. With over 5 million votes cast, those campaigning to remain part of Canada won with a ridiculously slim majority of 50.56% of the vote. Oh boy, this comment section is going to be fun, isn't it? <laughs> Number 20. Yeah, tell me more about that. I mean, obviously, being from Scotland, we've been going through like a similar kind of thing over the last, I mean, it's almost 10 years probably, probably longer, uh, about being independent, but Scotland is its own country in itself, but Quebec being a, a province, do you think it can ever achieve independence? It was so close there, I mean, that's just an extra like, bit of campaigning that could potentially push that over the edge. What are people's like opinion from Quebec? Why would you want to be independent or why would you not want to be independent? Tell me more about that and tell me if you're outside Quebec, like what, how would you feel if Quebec managed to become its own independent country? Would you be sad to lose that province and those people? Uh, yeah, tell me what your thoughts on Quebec, Quebec independence is. 26. The name Quebec comes from the Algonquin word Quebec, which means where the river narrows. Mm. This refers to the narrowing of the St. Lawrence River. And no, that's not my St. Lawrence. Lovely Jen. Oh, Jen. Oh, she narrows for no man. Number 27. 
Montreal, the largest city in Quebec, is the second biggest city in the world after Paris with a French-speaking population. No, That's okay, something an incorrect okay. person would say. This often cited Montreal factoid hasn't been true for a while as Montreal have been overtaken by two French-speaking cities in Africa, pushing Montreal into fourth place. We're still there. <laughs> Fête de Leon Huge Montreal. number. Number for 28. one city outside France, anyway. Of Canada's population of over 35 million people, just over 7 million are native French speakers. C'est bon, uh, fellas. Number 29. Montreal is a very funny place. I'm even laughing just saying it. Because it's the home of the Just for Laughs Festival, which is the largest international comedy festival in the world. And no, I haven't been invited. The official Just for Laughs mascot is named Victor, who looks like some kind of evil Mike Wazowski. Ooh. Number th so wait, just for laughs, is that from Canada? Is that from Quebec? I've seen that even over here in Malaysia. They play that on the TV all the time. I mean, it's not the comedy shows that, like, hidden camera shows. That So is that from Canada? 30. So Though it's both really Canada funny and the United anyway. States both celebrate Thanksgiving, Canada holds theirs a few weeks earlier than the Americans on the second Monday in October. This is all very confusing for those of us who don't celebrate Thanksgiving, although not quite as confusing as to why we don't. I mean, I'm thankful for stuff too. And I like turkey, sometimes, if it's moist. Ugh, moist. Number 31. Can we what the differences Roughly are between... Roughly 40% of Canada's total... USA and Canada's Roughly Thanksgiving? Different Number 31. Food, anything like that? Roughly 40% of Canada's total land mass is covered in forest. Tremendous. Oh, I hate myself. <laughs> Number 32. Though possibly the most famous lake monster resides in a Scottish loch, Canada has its own Loch famous sea serpent known as Ogopogo. Supposedly Ogopogo. living in Okanagan Lake, British Columbia, Ogopogo is apparently between 15 meters and 25 meters long. Another threat. Scottish and Canadian connection. Halifax, the capital of the province of Nova Scotia, is closer to Dublin Island than it is to Victoria, British Columbia. My God, say it with me: Canada is big. Number yeah, that's what that's a fact that someone told me in the comments as well that kind of blew my mind. And it, I guess, it goes away to explaining why people on that side of Canada have that almost Irish, Scottish accent. Uh, obviously, a lot of people came from those countries to Canada and dro dropped off at New, uh, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and things like that. But to, the fact that it's closer, it's still closer to Dublin than other parts of Canada is crazy for me. Putting its numerous snowy hills and mountains to good use, Canada holds the record for the most gold medals won by a country in a Winter Olympics, winning 14 medals for various forms of not falling over on slippery surfaces. Well done, guys. That's actually a Number 35. Impressive. Though Canadians are stereotypically polite and slow to anger, one notable exception is the popular comic book character Wolverine, who is from Alberta, Canada, bub. His frenemy I but never mostly knew the that. enemy bit, <laughs> Deadpool, also hails from the Great White North, too. Oh, Number I never 36. Knew Wolverine was Canadian. Canadians may be many things, but statistically speaking, stupid is not one of them. Canada is one of the most educated countries in the world. It's the only country on Earth in which more than 50% of the population is university educated. Mm. <laughs> Show offs. Number. Yeah, that's a big thing for me, man. Especially, is Canada somewhere I would consider moving to uh, in the next couple of years? And like. That's what I've learned in other videos as well. Like the level of education is so high compared to like pretty much every other country, uh, and yeah, I think it's a, I think it's just obviously a great. Number thirty-seven. Thing. Canadians are indeed a sporty lot too, and have contributed much to the world of sport. For instance, basketball was invented in 1891 by Canadian James Naismith while teaching in Massachusetts. Originally, the baskets were actual baskets Using with closed baskets, bottoms. Yeah, Every time the team scored, the ball had to be retrieved until someone had the bright idea to remove the bottom from the basket, no doubt making the game about 10 times less irritating. <laughs> Number 38. Canada is well known for its distinctive dress national police force known as the Mounties. Officially called the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, they keep people in Canada safe from crime and the prospect of not having fabulously attired federal law enforcement. Both equally important jobs. Number 39. In addition to being enormous, cold, and bilingual, Canada is also pretty gosh darned progressive. In 2005, Canada became the third country in the world and the first country in the Americas to legalize same sex marriage. Woo! Go Canada! Number 40. As it bears the image of the hilariously named common loon, the Canadian $1 coin is commonly known as a loony. 
When the $2 coin was introduced, Canadians dubbed it the Toonie, an imaginative fusion of the words two and loony, putting those university degrees to good use, I see. <laughs> Number 41. As the vast majority of Canadians are in fact human, they require food in order not to die. There's a life hack for you. Canada has put its own unique twist on food, resulting in a number of delicious local dishes. Probably the most well-known internationally is poutine, which mm. consists of fries topped with cheese curds and gravy, and is both French-Canadian in origin, and possibly the best frickin' idea I've ever heard. God bless you, Canada. Yeah, I've never tried poutine, but it's like, I think I mentioned on previous videos, it's right up my street when I live in the UK. I like, like chips and cheese. We get like curry sauce and things on top, it's really nice, so it's kind of similar, but I was actually going to make a video where I made poutine, and I checked the price of cheese curds here in Malaysia, and it was about, I don't know how much in dollars, in pounds, it was about 80 pounds. It was super expensive, I think, because they're imported, but I was like, that would be the most expensive poutine in the world if I made that one. of life. The lovable Winnie the Pooh is in fact Canadian in origin. Author A.A. A. Milne based the adorable yellow bear on a real bear from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Although, it can't have looked exactly the same, right? Also, Winnie the Pooh doesn't exactly sound Canadian, but hey, who are we to judge? <laughs> I've never made a lovable bear. Yeah, I've seen that on the Heritage Minutes as well, actually. In perhaps the most cool stereotypical story. fact known to man, Canada is by far the world's biggest producer of maple syrup, with around 70% of the planet's supply coming from Quebec alone. Number 44. Maple trees and their delicious blood is so integral to Canadian identity that the maple leaf, as well as being an ice hockey team, is considered to be one of the nation's most important symbols and features prominently on their national flag. See, mm. look, look very carefully. There it is. Number 45. Most polar bears are Canadian. Around 60% of the world's polar bear population of approximately 25,000 live in Canada. Maybe they're who Winnie the Pooh is based on. <laughs> Number 46. Canada is made up of 10 provinces and three territories. The provinces are Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, New Brunswick, Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia, Ontario, Prince Edward Island, Quebec, and uh, Saskatchewan. And the territories are the Northwest Territories, Nunavut, and Yukon. The difference between these provinces and territories are to do with rights. Territories are controlled by the federal government, whereas the provincial governments have far more individual control of their affairs. Mm. Number 47. Despite the fact that Canadian territories account for roughly 40% of the country's landmass, only 0.3% cool of well. Canadians actually live there. Right. Again, this is probably due to the fact it's disgustingly, wretchedly, hellishly cold. And that's coming from someone who lives in England. Number 48. Canada has at least 2 million lakes, more than all the lakes in every other country combined, which, mm. frankly, seems a bit like lake overkill to me. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen that in a couple Number of videos 49. also. It's a crazy Stoners fact. rejoice! Just give them a second to rejoice, they're a bit slow. Medicinal marijuana is legal in Canada, and the country is due to legalise the use of cannabis for recreational use in 2018. 420 blaze it. Am I doing it right? Num yeah, tell me about that, the legalisation of marijuana. How's that went down in Canada? Has it been a great success? Is it net positive, net negative, or what negatives, are, is, if any, are there to Canada? Uh, yeah, what's the effect been? It's like an interesting case that it just like went so, so completely legal, man. So I'm interested to know more about the current situation of that in Canada. Number 50. The Canadian national anthem, imaginatively titled O oh Canada, was written in 1880 and was in French. It did not become Canada's official national anthem until 1980, ten years after the government bought the rights for the song for one dollar. Bargain. Number 51. Clearly, Canadians love their national anthem, so much so the nation's official phone number is 1-800-O-Canada. Seriously, not getting O-Canada. I didn't even know nations had phone numbers, but that is I never really knew that. Great. Did you know that? Number 52. Rather confusingly, Hawaiian pizza was invented in Canada by a Greek pizzeria owner. I Hawaiian never knew Canada. that. I actually like that. Tell me Hawaiian if pineapple pizza on the has pizza is a, a good thing or not. pizza variety, with many people happily munching on a pineapple pie. But many others decrying Hawaiian pizza as a hellish machination of Satan. I'm in that camp, I think it's a crime against God. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who tweeted his love for Hawaiian pizza in 2017, appears to be in the former camp, although this could genuinely start a civil war. 
Number I, 53. I'm also a supporter of Pineapple. There's a place in Canada called Dilda. <laughs> going to pause oh, for five seconds okay. so you can make your own jokes up. <laughs> I just thought of one. Okay, let's move on. Number 54. Santa Claus is Canadian, according to the Canadian Immigration Minister. Yeah? Santa Claus, Canadian, is he? Yeah? Well, the Easter Bunny is British, and the Tooth Fairy is from Croydon. Two can play in that game, buddy. Number 55. Half of Canada's provinces, which account for more than 85% of the population, are governed by women. Woo! Girl power. Spice up your life. Uh, when two become one. No, that's just another Spice Girls song. Yeah, I've learned about many strong female Canadian McDonald's Canadians in history through Heritage Minute, so that doesn't actually surprise me too much, actually. Number 56. Canadian McDonald's sell the McLobster. There it is, look at that. Looks, uh, looks good. Is that nice? Is that tasty? Number 57. A 2013 study found Canadians to be the second happiest people in the world. However, as of 2017, four years later, Canadians dropped to seventh in the happiness rankings. Oh, Canada. Canada. You okay, buddy? We're here if you need to talk to us. Any about reason it. for that also? Number 58. Stereotypically, Canadians are known for their humble and polite nature, often depicted as frequent apologizers, and I'm sorry for that, Canada. Determined to confirm this stereotype at all costs, Canada has an Apology Act, which allows apologies in court to be given as a show of compassion and empathy, but not necessarily an admission of guilt. Yeah, I don't know. Number 59. That in the Canadian Canada has more to... donut shops per capita than any other country. In fact, nice. they love donuts so much, lot of the country itself is frosted. Get it? With frost, not sugar? Nah, I didn't like I that. love I donuts too, man. Oh, they actually look good. Number 60. Canada is the home to the Trans-Canada Highway, a transcontinental highway system that stretches an incredible 8,030 kilometers through all 10 of Canada's provinces. I can't help but feel it'd be better as a monorail. Everything's better if it was a monorail. I feel like I would love to travel that one day, man. That's like The highest listing. mountain in Canada is Mount Logan, which isn't named after Wolverine, but stands at an impressive 5,959 metres tall, making it the second highest mountain in North America after Alaska's Denali. In the year 2000, then Prime Minister Jean Chrétien announced his plan to rename the mountain after former Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. This mm. plan was later abandoned, however, when it became clear that pretty much everybody thought it was an awful, horrible, not good idea. <laughs> So I guess Number the older Trudeau has a good reputation in Canada. Country one, hoodies are known as bunny hugs. Ah, oh, how cute. Look at Drake and his bunny hug. Wait, that just sounds weird. Number 63. Though Canada itself is not an island, it is home to three of the world's biggest. Namely, Baffin Island, Ellesmere Island and Victoria Island. Nintendo 64. The province of Alberta is home to the curiously named Head Smashed In Buffalo Jump, a cliff formation where indigenous Canadians would hunt large numbers of buffalo in the traditional manner, that is, by driving them so they'd run off a cliff, like lemmings. Legend has it that a young Blackfoot wanted to watch the buffalo fall to their deaths from below, but ended up being crushed to death underneath them. When he was uncovered, his head was smashed in and the name stuck. Wow, I sounded way too happy about that. Sorry, that name is uh, one of the most interesting I've ever heard for a Number 65. location. St. Louis du Ha. Ha is a parish in Quebec that has the honour of being the only town in the world with two exclamation points in its name. And uh, honestly, us at 101 Towers have been on this, and as far as we can tell, that's literally the only interesting thing about the place. In fact, Clive's there right now and he can't find anything. I might just leave him there. Yeah, tell no. me about that. How did that get its name? I, I think I heard that in another video as well. Tell me where that name originated six, six. from. Two thirds of the world's supply of cesium comes from one mine in the Burnick Lake, Manitoba. Cesium. Oh, I love that stuff on a salad. Oh, no, wait, that's Caesar. Oh, no, wait, that's not even something you put on salad. I know nothing about salad. Number 67. At least 35% of music broadcast on Canadian radio has to be Canadian in origin or face the wrath of the law. This policy is known as CanCon and is meant to support the work of Canadian artists. Mm. Wow, that must be a lot of Rush, Drake and Celine Dion. Number I actually think that's a fair uh, strategy or fair policy. Uh, and with the amount of Canadian artists that have be, like found success worldwide maybe that sort of policy would have an effect on that because it, it's like same in sports when you play a lot of young players from your own country and then get them experience and things and then it like makes their career better in the long term something like this is great for like really promoting canadian 
artists and giving them the kind of kind of the foundation to to get their music played and things like that as well. So I really I I think that's something that should be in a lot more countries as well actually. License plates in Nunavut and the Northern Territories used to be shaped like polar bears. Ah, however, this cool. is no longer the case. I guess all good things must come to an end. Number 69. <laughs> oh, Canada. Pedants must love Canada because it was they who gave us Trivial Pursuit, specifically Canadian Scott Abbott and Chris Haney in 1979. Thanks, chaps, mm. for ruining every Christmas family get-together ever. <laughs> Number 70! Insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas, love that stuff, was first isolated at the University of Toronto in 1921-22 by Dr. Frederick Banting, great name, and Charles Best, even better name. Number... I mean, that fact, that, that's the one that, something like that just deserves uh, some appreciation, man. That is one of the greatest findings ever in the history of mankind. It's probably saved millions of lives made a lot of people's lives just easier in gen general to get by and things like that. Uh, it can be like understated how important that is, and it's from Canada as well, man. I really love that. Uh, 71. Canadians don't exactly look like they do in South Park. Sorry to disappoint, what with their flappy heads. Creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker revealed that when their show began to be criticised for its simplistic animation style, they created Canadian characters Terence and Philip with deliberately simplistic head movements as a sarcastic response. Eventually, they decided it would be funny if all Canadians in the show looked similar. Numbers that we do! 20% of the world's fresh water is in Canada. Those fresh water hogging, polite, apologizing Canadian scumbags. Oh, I can't stay mad at you guys for long. Number 73. Canada's National Day, creatively named Canada Day, is celebrated on the 1st of July on the anniversary of the enactment of the Constitution Act 1867, which joined British colonies in the area into one single dominion called Canada. Although Canada existed before 1867, this date is used as it commemorates an important move towards Canada's status as a strong, independent nation that don't need no man. <laughs> hey. Yeah, tell me how you celebrate that day. Is that like a big celebration? Do you get the day off work? Is there like parades and that sort of thing? Or are people just more like, just have a day off and chill, man? He hates number 74. Nickelback are from Canada. This isn't a particularly interesting fact, I just thought I'd remind everyone that Nickelback exists and they're not actually as bad as people say they are. Hey, hey, I'm Do people say they're bad? Boxer. I've not heard about them for quite a wee while. Number 75. Canada is well known for its stubborn and some would say misguided belief that milk is best stored in bags, a notion regarded as near heretical in other Western nations. In much of Canada, milk is sold in units of three roughly one litre bags that are housed in a plastic milk jug when being used. Ooh, it's mm. enough to make you feel physically sick. Number Why is that? Is it better for the environment? Obviously, plastic is something people talk about is not good for the environment, but it looks like it's more like reusable rather than just buying con like new cartons every time. Uh, but yeah, here in Asia, it's very common to buy your drinks at the street side and things like that in a bag as well. It can be like coffee, tea, hot drinks, cold drinks. You'll buy them in a like triangle bag. The straw, stick, stricks, uh, the straw sticks out of it, you just drink it like that. So actually here in Asia, it's very common to get drinks in bags, whereas in the UK, definitely, I've never seen that before. 76. Though Canada may provide only 70% of the world's supply of maple syrup, it provides 100% of the world's supply of Justin Bieber. Which is better, you decide. If you haven't heard of Justin Bieber, I can only assume you're a member of an uncontacted Amazonian tribe. In what which do case, Canadians think the about internet. Justin Bieber? Be, be Are they proud or not? Number 77. Canada's best-selling musician is Celine Dion, who is perhaps most famous for singing the theme tune to Titanic. Yeah, Despite that song mostly singing everywhere. in French and English, she also sings in Spanish, German, Italian, Japanese, Latin, and Mandarin Chinese. Really? Wow, I can barely speak English. Oh, well, she's like Number super talented then. Beavers are Canada's official animal symbol and are featured on the Canadian five-cent coin. And no, I'm not going to make any beaver jokes. I'm better than that. Number 79. Canada is also home to the world's longest freshwater beach. It's called Wasaga Beach, in case you ever want to visit. Wasaga? Sounds kind of more Japanese or The coldest something. temperature ever recorded in Canada was minus 63 Celsius, or minus 81.4 Fahrenheit, on February the 3rd, 1957, in Snag, Yukon. Nope, 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 no. Not for me, literally no. 
I value my nipples too much. <laughs> Number 81. Canadian actor Leslie Nielsen's brother, Eric, was the deputy Canada prime minister well. of Canada for so two funny. years, from 1984 to 1986. Eric said he was often mistook for his comedian brother. Surely it can't have been that common. <laughs> but don't call me Shirley. He must have known where I was going with that, surely. Number 82. There are nearly 2.5 million caribou in Canada, which frankly caribou. seems like too many caribou to me. Oh dear. Number 83. The Canadian dollar is sometimes described as a petro currency. A country is said to have a petro currency when a sufficiently large proportion of their wealth comes from the sale of oil, which causes the value of their currency to rise and fall with the price of oil. Hmm. Number 80. Is that true? Is Canada so dependent or is oil, oil and gas like a big exporter? export of Canada. I never knew it was so important to the Canadian currency. Like, I'm from Scotland, obviously we're part of the UK, it's not that important, but if we became an independent country, I think we would be similar because a lot of the income for Scotland would be based on oil and gas as well, but I never knew that was the case for Canada, yeah. actually. Toronto is home to the CN Tower, which was the world's tallest freestanding building until the construction of the Burj Khalifa and the Canton Tower. Standing at a mighty 1,815.3 feet, it is now the third tallest building in the world, but remains the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. Spider-Man would have a field day. Wow, Although yes. not Spider-Man, the new one, because he's scared of heights. But never knew it was so tall, actually. Have you been on there Number before? Number 85. What's it like? According to one study, the cleanest city in the world is Calgary in Alberta. Funnily enough, though, this study didn't include the presence of visible litter in its standard of clean, so make of that what you will before you dine off its very streets. Mm. Tell me if it is really Number clean. Number 86. The environmentalist organization Greenpeace began in Vancouver. Thanks, Canada. Number 87. Never knew that. The either. northernmost point in Canada is Cape Columbia. It's the most northern point of land outside Greenland. Damn you, Greenland. It's probably Santa's luxurious crib that ruined that fact for us. Number 88. Canada shares four of the five Great Lakes found along the border of the United States of America, with Lake Michigan being located entirely within the USA. Damn it, USA, ruining that fact with your lake hogging. Number 89. There's Donald Trump in the White Horse, the, video, the capital city of the Yukon, not literally un cheval blank, is the driest city in Canada. Reminds me of my exploit. Actually, I'm not going to go there. Number 90. Hockey and lacrosse are Canada's national sports. Lacrosse is thought to derive from indigenous sports from absolutely bloody ages ago, which makes it really quite an old fashioned sport. Old boy. Yeah, no. lacrosse is something I never knew was from Canada before I started making these videos, but a lot of people have told me uh, about it. But how does its popularity, I think someone said, how does its popularity compare to hockey? Is hockey just like a lot more popular? Someone said hockey is like the winter sport, lacrosse is the summer sport. Uh, tell me if you're a fan of one of the other, how they compare. Uh, but lacrosse, again, it's a sport, being a sports fan, it's a sport I know very little about because we really have no coverage of it, of it in the UK. Uh, so uh, yeah, maybe I'll make a video about lacrosse as well, actually. Wow, that went quick. The Canadian motto is Amari Usque Ad Mare. It means from sea to sea, which is kind of a weird moral, really, because it's not about good or evil or anything. It's just the literal definition of what a country is. Maybe I need to go to bed. Number 92. Canada has a coin that features a glow-in-the-dark dinosaur. You know you're in a fun country when one of the coins is basically a pog. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Number 93. It's currently illegal for comic books in Canada to depict criminal acts. However, the government is probably going to change this quite soon as it makes pretty much any superhero comic quite dull. I mean, what are they stopping? Yeah. Number 94. How does that work? Is that true? Canada is a very inclusive country. In fact, recent statistics show that one in five Canadians were born outside of Canada itself. Number 95. Oh, jeez, this is going to be fun. Okay, let's give this a go. Petquachnemesic Kesaway Benik Lake is the longest place name in Canada. Whew, I need to lie down and frankly, a medal after saying that. I don't know how people come Number up 96. with these names, man. Founded in 1867, the Moosehead Brewery in New Brunswick is the oldest independent brewery in Canada and churns out an incredible 1,642 bottles of beer per minute. Per minute! That's about as often as I can drink them because I am an absolute lad. Number 97. Canada is also famous for its ice wines, which are wines made from grapes that were frozen while still on the vine. More than 75% of Canada's ice wine comes from Ontario, so move there if you're into low temperatures and wine. Ice wine? Yeah, I don't think I've ever even heard of ice wine, actually. 
Uh, tell me how the taste of that would compare to non-ice wine. Uh, I didn't, yeah, again, I didn't know that was a thing. I knew Canada produced its own wine, but I didn't realise it was through this uh, process or method. Uh, I would yeah, be interested to know that, how that compares, but yeah, a lot of these facts I never actually knew before, but it's, like, it's so entertaining and interesting to find out about them. In another phenomenal appeal to stereotypes, there are, on average per year, 247 car accidents in Canada that involve moose. And I mean the animal moose, by the way, not the chocolate moose that you can use as a dessert or an aphrodisiac. Number 99. Edmonton, the provincial capital of Alberta, is home to North America's largest mall, the West Edmonton mm. Mall, spanning the equivalent of 48 city blocks. As if shopping wasn't, you know, long enough. Yes, you're not my Alberta not video a couple of days ago, actually. The capital of Nunavut is Iqaluit, which means many fish in Inuktitut. They love their sea-related names, huh? Oh, 101. Someone from Nova Scotia is known as a blue noser. One would assume that this is due to cold weather in Nova Scotia, but since literally everywhere in Canada is cold, that feels slightly redundant to me. I feel freezing now even talking about it. I'm only joking, it's actually really hot in this video booth. It's awful. I'd quite like to be in Canada now, actually, although now it's time for an end board. That right there was 101 fans. Okay. Very interesting, as with all my previous videos learning about Canada. So many different things. I'm definitely going to watch that video again, just to really take, take all of them in a bit more. Uh, again, that was a wide range of topics, so it was great to find out not just about like certain things like history, and that was like really everything there. Uh, a smorgasbord of facts about Canada. Tell me what you, if what ones do, are there that surprise you most or that you didn't know about already? For me, the two things when I'm watching these that I want to learn more about is, as I mentioned before, like the indigenous people, the First Nations people of Canada, those groups, how they survive, how they live their lives, man. It's something so far away from my life. That makes it interesting for me and I just want to see how these people live and what their their territories are like. So, and yeah, the other one was Nunavut itself. So one of those territories, uh, I think because of the sheer size, the sheer size of the landmass, see how north, as I mentioned, how far on north it goes and how it's broken into so many little bits. There's parts of that that must just be untouched by humans, I would imagine. But it makes me want to learn more about it. So maybe this week, on when I usually learn about provinces, I'll learn about the Nunavut territory, see what it, see what life is like there. Maybe I can do that video during the week. So recommend some Nunavut videos. And tell me what you think about this one. Uh, thanks.